Kurt and Goldie's beach house is unsellable. When you think of homes that are for sale but not selling, you probably don't picture huge fancy castles. But the owners of these mega mansions will tell you that's not true. These once valuable pieces of land have since had no buyers, no matter how beautiful they are. Different things make people not want to buy the beautiful house on this list. Some people thought that the property's market value was lower because of the image of the previous owners. For some people, the past of the land has made it worth almost nothing as an investment. A lot of the homes on this list aren't from Netflix's The Haunting. Instead, they're homes owned by famous people that just won't sell for some reason. Usually, it's because of high property taxes or overvaluation, but it's still annoying for celebs who want to sell homes they can't use. Keep watching for a list of the most expensive homes that almost no one wants to buy right now. Eva Longoria's LA Mansion, Los Angeles, California, on the market since 2015. Total area, 11,000 square feet. Initial value, $9.8 million. Could you picture waking up to see the same thing Eva Longoria did? We can wish. By the way, Eva's LA home used to be occupied by another famous person, Tom Cruise. In 2015, the star bought the 11,000 square foot home from Cruise. Aside from being private, it's also a great spot, just a stone's throw from Mulholland. The four bedroom house was a star, but it wasn't enough to get people to buy it. Although Eva paid $14 million for it herself, she later lowered the price to $9.8 million. Ouch! Kelly Clarkson's estate, Hendersonville, Tennessee, on the market since 2017. Total area, 20,000 square feet. Initial value, $8.75 million. Kelly Clarkson is one of reality TV's biggest stars and has had a lot of success over the years. The singer owns a huge 20,000 square foot house in Hendersonville, Tennessee, but since 2017, she's been trying to sell it. With seven bedrooms and 10 bathrooms, it's a big house for anyone to handle. That could be why the house is still for sale. From $8.75 million to $7.5 million in May 2020, the price has gone down, but no one is yet to buy it. Chelsea Handler's LA Estate, Los Angeles, California, on the market since 2018. Total area, 5,572 square feet. Initial value, $11.5 million. Chelsea Handler isn't afraid to talk about how rich and famous she is. The Honest Talk shows host and actress didn't mess around when she sold her Bel Air home for a reasonable $11.5 million in 2018. The contemporary home has a lot of outdoor room for entertaining, making it the perfect home for LA's rich and famous. But it hasn't quite hit the mark yet. Since no one was interested for a year, the price was reduced to $10.95 million. The house is still looking for a new family as of 2020. Shaquille O'Neal's Mansion, Windermere, Florida, on the market since 2018. Total area, 31,000 square feet. Initial value, $28 million. Shaquille O'Neal knows that bigger is better. The famous NBA player bought his huge home in Windermere, Florida for only $4 million in 1993, but Shaq made it his own. He made it even more magical by adding a private dock and a workshop for 17 cars. The price of this out-of-the-world house went up because it needed a lot of work, which isn't always a good thing. The house was for sale for $28 million in 2018, but no one was interested. Even though the price will go down to $19.5 million, O'Neill is still looking for the right person to buy it. Jennifer Lopez's Mansion, Los Angeles, California On the market since 2015 Total area, 17,129 square feet Initial value, $17 million Jennifer Lopez's huge, beautiful home in California has everything a pop star could want, even a dressing room for getting ready for Hollywood events. In 2015, the singer put the 17,000-square-foot home in the Hidden Hills on the market for $17 million. This house has nine bedrooms, a dance school, a theater with 20 seats, a gym, and a big recording studio. It also has a changing room. Lopez had trouble selling the house, even though it had a lot of nice things. 
the price had to go down by $4.5 million, and now it's on the market for $12.5 million. Lopez also owns homes in New York, Miami, and Bel Air, but she plans to stay in those places. The home probably didn't sell because of the high property taxes in California, which is home to big companies like Apple and is known for being almost as expensive as New York. Still, that's not likely the reason. Cali's property tax rate is even less than Ohio's. The average home in the state is worth $385,000. It only brings in $3,104 in taxes. Peaches Geldof's Kent Mansion on the market since NA. Total area unknown. Initial value $1 million. Everyone was shocked when Peaches Geldof died too soon in 2014. Her death was similar to that of her mother, Paula Yates. At the time of her death, Peaches was living with her husband, two young children, and a house worth a million dollars in Kent. After Peaches died, the house was left empty for more than a year. During that time, the media took creepy pictures of what used to be a happy family home. The house got worse and worse until it was finally sold in late 2015. Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston's former estate, Beverly Hills, California, on the market since 2019. Total area, 11,173 square feet. Initial value, $44.5 million. Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt were one of the best pairs in Hollywood. Soon after getting married in the year 2000, they bought a huge home in Beverly Hills that was 11,173 square feet. Of course, they added things like a guest house and a tennis court that made it more valuable. It was sold to a businessman after the breakup, and that person put it back on the market in 2019. It didn't sell like lemonade in a drought, despite what you might have thought. For more than a year, it took the right buyer to come along. However, that buyer has allegedly put the house up for sale again. The $10 New Jersey Mansion, New Jersey, on the market since 2017. Total area, 4,000 square feet. Initial value, $10. When this house was first put on the market, it cost 10 bucks, and it still costs $10 today. The house is an old one in New Jersey and is 4,000 square feet. But the one main reason it's not the deal of the century According to a Fox report from the time it was first offered, there's a catch. The buyer would be legally required to move the house off the ground. It's on land that was approved for a neighborhood by the planning board in the town of New Jersey. If you bought the house, you'd have to move it right away. That's not possible, so you'd have to pay a lot of money to get the land under it back from the city. Michael Jordan's Chicago Estate, Chicago, Illinois, on the market since 2012. Total area, 56,000 square feet. Initial value, $29 million. Michael Jordan first put his 56,000 square foot home on the market for $29 million. The price of the Highland Park, Illinois home has dropped to less than $15 million because Jordan couldn't find a buyer. He's been trying to sell the seven acre house since 2012, but he can't get any price for it. A former NBA star who now works for Nike tried to make the deal even better by including a pair of rare old Air Jordans. What's the matter then? Even for such a big house, Chicago Mag says the price being asked is too high. No one wants to buy a house whose value will go down over time. Forbes said that the market for such a high-end home is not limitless. For people who aren't as strong as Jordan, the place's exercise features like the basketball court aren't a selling point. The Real Deal says that there are also a lot of culture clash between real estate agents because the house was so well known. Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn's Beach Mansion, Malibu, California, on the market since 2011. Total area, 4,195 square feet. Initial value, $14.8 million. These two Hollywood stars have been together for a long time and don't seem to be planning to split up anytime soon. The two make money together from movies like Overboard, Private Benjamin, The Thing, and others. They also have a side business with their expensive Malibu beach house. The house, which looks like it was inspired by Bali, was put on the market for $14.8 million in 2011. 
The pair from Hollywood have been renting it for $95,000 a month for almost 30 years before that. They made money by letting out the beach house, but it was hard to sell. For example, GM and Exxon were at their best in the 1970s when the Broad Beach Estate was built. The cobblestone patio that leads to the tropical-themed home is one of the most beautiful parts of the land. The great room is two stories and has an entrance with a big chandelier. The chef's kitchen has been restored. Tommy Hilfiger's Mansion, Greenwich, Connecticut, on the market since 2020. Total area, 13,344 square feet. Initial value, $48 million. Not long ago, this mega mansion was added to the market. Tom Hilfiger, a famous fashion designer and millionaire, is selling his home in Greenwich, Connecticut to a buyer through Sotheby's International for $47.5 million. This follows the 2020 trend of wealthy New Yorkers leaving the city for nearby country areas and states instead of thriving in the city. The house that Hilfiger now lives in was called Chateau Paterno. It was built in 1939 for Charles Paterno. It was built by Greville Ricard, a famous Yale graduate hired by the real estate mogul. After 20 years, art buyer Joseph Hirschborn bought the land and put 6,000 sculptures and paintings from the 19th and 20th centuries in it. He chose to try to sell his huge house because he had heard that the market was strong, as reported by the Wall Street Journal. Hilfiger is moving to Palm Beach, Florida with his wife. The house he lives in is 13,344 square feet and was built in 1939. It has a nursery, a guest cottage, a four-bay garage, and water and rose beds. Agents are surprised that no one has come forward to buy the house yet.